There's nothing quite as iconic as the amazing space battles of the Autobots versus the Decepticons in the Transformers. But have you ever questioned what was there before Transformers? What existed before we had these amazing cosmic battles? Hi, I'm Zinni, and on today's pilot episode of the Retroboticon, I want to take you down the amazingly big history behind Takara's Microman. So what is Microman? Well, Microman was Takara's downscaling of their currently popular Henshin Cyborg series in 1974, which in of itself was a spin-off of the Combat Joe aka G.I. Joe figures at the time. Takara conceived of the Microman line when they wanted to release vehicles for the Henshin Cyborg figures, but were concerned that they would be too costly and take up too much space. So they instead decided to downgrade their figures into smaller ones so that they could make vehicles appropriately sized. This first wave of Microman figures were simply the Henshin Cyborg characters shrunk down with a few kitbashy vehicles and a big base called the Mobile Exploration Lab. This was a big base that could separate into multiple different vehicles for the Microman to drive. Now, since Takara wanted to disestablish these from the main Henshin Cyborg figures, they gave the Microman a sort of very not super great, very silly backstory. You see, the Microman hail from Micro-Earth and fled in hibernation capsules to escape their planet. They crash landed on our Earth and, awoken by the sun's rays, started building vehicles to try and search for their other Micro-Brethren. It's short, it's simple, it's all it really needs to be. It didn't have a big TV show or anything behind it, so the toys would simply just sell themselves, and sell themselves they did. Microman ended up being a huge hit, so much of a hit in fact that Takara decided to focus on this new line instead of Henshin Cyborg. And in 1975, they created a proper antagonist for the Microman, the Acroyer. These were supposedly Microman left at the bottom of the sea, and due to having no exposure to the sun's rays, turned insane. These guys came with cool backpacks and had a more robotic aesthetic. They also came with a whole bunch of new vehicles for the Microman and Acroyer alike. And this proceeded to Takara reinventing the wheel every year for the Microman series for the next few years to come. Such as 1976, introducing the Titans, which were their own subclass of figures with these neat metallic ball joints that you could take off and put on other figures. By 1978, Microman had become a home staple. So big, in fact, that Mego Company had reached out to Takara to start importing them into the US under a brand new and totally 80s name, the Micronauts. Micronauts were primarily just re-releases of Takara's old Microman figures, but Mego themselves tried to add to the line by adding their own subline called Aliens, which were these freaky glow-in-the-dark figures that you could pop the heads off. They glow in the dark. Alien creatures with brains that glow in the dark, each sold separately. Repto, half reptile. And they also made their own set of techno animal vehicles to go alongside them. Microman was riding pretty strong right up until 1979 1980, where the interest started to fall off as Gundam had started really becoming the general consensus of robots. People wanted more realistic robots, they didn't want the super cartoony stuff of the 70s styles anymore. Did try to incorporate these ideas at first, but it didn't pan out, and by 1981, they realized that the interest for Microman was at an all-time low. It didn't help that Mego at this point had filed for bankruptcy and sold their rights to the Micronauts to Hortoy Toys, who ended up reselling them and rebranding them as the Interchangeables. But that didn't stop Takara from trying to reboot the whole series. That's right, in 1981 they started re-releasing Microman figures with a higher focus on robots. This sort of sea change was also due to their new Diaclone and Chronoform lines doing really well in absence of the Microman series. And that change was signed by the Micro Robot subline of 1982. This subline saw them really start focusing on those robots with a brand new 7 part combiner and a huge figure called Bull Sonic. This figure is significant because it was the first real proper figure that turned into a space fighter jet and back. And then came the all important year of 1983. This is when you really start getting the Micro Change series, which is when you start seeing Cassette Man aka Soundwave, all of his cassettes, uh, Reflector, Megatron, and several other gun robos, 
make a pair of binoculars in there too. While the series was indeed doing well, they weren't selling as much due to Migos' downfall in 1981, but that's when a certain Hasbro stepped in in 1984 and rebranded them as the Transformers. And with Transformers being the biggest success it was, it was the final nail in the coffin for the Microman series. Or so we thought at the very least. Come 1996, a small toy company named Romando had gotten a license to re-release some of the old Microman figures in a sort of replica series. The series turned out to sell really well, so well in fact, that come 1998, Takara decided to rebrand and reboot the whole series. Microman was now subtitled with the Magna Power line. It came with its own show, its own new adverts, uh, brand new figures, and re-releases of all the old sets we all knew and loved for about a year and a half. But you see, while there was interest, there just wasn't enough interest to drive sales up, and sadly, Takara had to shelve the Microman operation in 2002. The series went on a fairly lengthy hiatus up until late 2003 where new teaser images were released of Microman figures. Turns out Takara still had a little bit of interest in Microman and wanted to try and test the waters with some new tester figures. These figures had much more modern articulation but with the old school stylings and they ended up selling pretty well. Well enough for them to continue this trend for the next four years. Now each year seemed to have its own trend of figure sets with more three or four groups of figures rather than just branching out into all sorts of crazy vehicles and things. To the point of even releasing a team of teen idols at some point. Who, who thinks this is a good idea, man? But like it always seemed faded to, Microman just didn't have enough legs to stand up on itself and sadly went under in 2007. While Microman might not ever be a household name to be revered by by all toy collectors alike and everybody scrambling to get the new tape deck that turns into a helicopter, its important influences and imports on the Transformers is still seen today. I mean, everybody loves Soundwave, everybody loves Megatron, everybody kind of loves Reflector, probably, I don't know. And it's all big thanks to such a little team. Thank you, Microman, for everything you've done.